Oh my god, Etrata, go! Go, my assassins! Oh man, we will get insane board on top of insane cards. And we can just try to draw another counter spell. I'm drawing everything, you know? I like it. And our opponent didn't respect the Trata, and I think that now we will change his mind. I think our opponent is waiting with deadly cover up, honestly. What are you? Man, I can counter spell deadly cover up. Are you serious? <laughs> oh my god, I'm so happy I played this game. Hello everyone, it's Love here, and today something you never expected. Yes, we are playing Assassin's Demir deck, and we will actually beat the meta with this one, which I know you don't believe, but we have stats to prove it. And I'll be honest, Etrata is the card that was requested since the start of the set, and man, like, we finally did a deck with her. Uh, you need Assassin's to get the full advantage of this ability, basically you get a free creature uh, that is, you know, this 2-2 worded thing that uh, can be turned up for 4 mana. And we have even Heartstabber for 2 mana. This is our only 2 drop that basically like a Geeks can instantly activate a Trata on turn 3. So you can already get the token when she enters the battlefield. And this is not the final version of the deck. After I played with the with the deck, I changed few cards, but we'll talk about it in the outro. So I really hope you will enjoy it. If you appreciate trying, you know, Assassin's Tribal in, in Standard, uh, I would absolutely appreciate the subscribe and like. That really it does help and yeah let's go into games i hope you'll have a lot of fun guys all right we're going first let's sit i like my my hand you know with the bats and make disappears we definitely have options uh, we are against the only true decks of magic forever so that's great i think we go with the river right if that's a small creature we can cut it down so cut down is amazing for the next turn I honestly think we go make disappear on this. Not the best trait ever, but it's the one that we have to do. And we negate all the Kumano value. So that's something. There is a chance they had a buff spell. So is it Artrata? She is absolutely amazing. Yeah, let's let's get her. They cannot kill her at dance step. I have to say, Etrata has really nice stats. Like 1-4 with death touch means that she's always a problem. Alright, and it seems that our opponent doesn't want to stack enough burn to kill her, so maybe she will be ignored. I think he thinks that he can roll her over and just Monstrous Rage. Uh, this will still die. So that's an interesting uh, decision right now. So, if we block, she dies. Nearly for sure. And for the next turn... Okay, I think we take this. I don't think he can dish out like insane levels of damage. Okay, that was a very good call, because Play with Fire is not worth such a powerful 3-drop. Alright. Alright. So we definitely attack, we get some value. By the way, we can actually cast this. <laughs> play with Fire. <laughs> we can play with Fire one of those. And I think we go Bat. Into what? I'm not sure. It will depend what the other cards are that he has right now. We need to, you know... Oh, man. They're already starting to play this, this card. Alright, so if we remove this, because that kills the bat for a very cheap cost, I think this is the card. We could go for the slick shot, but I don't think it's worth it. On ground, they don't have... A perfect situation and they cannot pay the ward so this actually is a problem for them here's the slick shot and let's see the swing all right all right I'll take it so we go to blockers here we go here and we remove basically everything and this is how you get extra value from Ertrata. this is extremely nice draw man all right, let's get more. <laughs> I like it, you know? I like it. And our opponent didn't respect the Trata, and I think that now we will change his mind. I can actually just activate this, but you know what? It's more efficient to go for the bat where we can and keep the cut down. Yeah, this doesn't do anything without the buff spell. All right, we are getting some serious value over them, but we need to be careful. If they can start killing bats, they get all the removal back. 
Well, that's it. Attacking with only code breaker, right? All right. I will try it. I'm getting those cards for free, <laughs> so you know, uh, that's a lot of Atratas. And let's see if our opponent starts to respect her. Well, he definitely learned to respect the Assassins. Alright, this was... Uh, you can see how she single-handedly sw swings the whole game. Uh, this is some serious value. Alright, let's sit. Uh, to be absolutely honest, I don't love this hand. Bro, like, this really shouldn't be an aggro deck, right? Uh, I will mulligan anyway, because we don't have assassins, and I want to showcase you assassins. This is hand is probably auto loose, but we'll try. With the Siren, there is a chance we might curve into some lands, if we don't draw them naturally. Uh, like, we have one chance, man. <laughs> Alright. I need to hit this. If I miss, the game is probably over, right? Alright. Not the best land, but it's a land. I'll take it. There might be a chance. So our opening, oh, oh, sorry, opening is as clunky as possible, but you know, we're kinda getting somewhere slowly. So who knows, who knows? Our opponent doesn't have, uh, you know, the domain yet. Let's see what the next triumph will be. I assume that he will uh, activate ley lines with the next land, but we'll see. No. So the ley line is minus three, right? So it's three. Okay, so he basically can use all the mana to get there. He has something. So it's either a heart migration or uh, the ley line binding. All right, we want this exalt if anything. I would love to hit a land. Thank you. You know what? Shuffler is cooperating. All right, so we can we can go for another Hearth Stabber or just a Siren and get another land. I want to make sure that I draw all, all the lands from the top. They might have things like, you know, uh, lockdowns, but we need to take this risk. I need to recover some of my value. And if we can get around Leyline, so he kills one of those and then we go with Praetor, that would be great. But we probably won't get there, but you know, that's a fair shot. If they tap on this turn, uh, we kind of get the same idea. I think they, they are waiting. So the next turn might be a Sunfall. Listen, let's go. Let's go. They need to respond to this. Let's play land first. I mean, this is something they have to respond. Let's see. If they have a ley line, they will play it now. Oh my god. Oh my god, the triggers! <laughs> Man, either you get those creatures with a Trata or cards with gigs. Like, you cannot go wrong with this. Oh my god, the value! This is insane, I love it. And now we have Make Disappear to win this game. With this, I think we won. Sure. Uh, this is end step, so I... C oh, I can... Okay, 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 that's fine. That's I I'm getting my basic. I was scared that I won't be able to make this appear, but don't you worry. I should take the black mana, but I'm so focused on this counter spell that I'm still taking the blue one. Go. I know you have it. Go for it. Man, I cannot believe that we went from uh, like this opening to this situation. I tell you, this deck has insane potential. Oh my god, Etrata, go. Go, my assassins. Oh man, we will get insane board on top of insane cards. And we can just try to draw another counter spell. I'm drawing everything. I will kill myself be <laughs> before he dies, alright? And here's our make disappear. I'm still drawing cards. You will find Sloth just drawing cards anyway. And yep. What do we... And for sure that's, that's a little bit much. And one more. I like the bat. Sorry, I need to take a second for... Okay, okay, let's go like this. Let's make sure that we have full hand of value. <laughs> this is not the best day for our opponent. <laughs> oh my god. I, I feel dirty after this game. But you know what? We deserve it. Because we took a one lander and we kind of missed turn two, basically. But we still recovered perfectly. All right, let's see it. Our opponent is going first. We have a lot of two mana interaction, so I kind of like it. And let's see it. 
Let's sit. The so our early game will be super slow because we are on the draw. And as we know, being on the draw means that you aren't a very good player. Uh, so unfortunately, I need to remit it in my next game. However, for this one, uh, the cutdown would be great, but we don't have the mana to cast it. So I guess we can main phase with Mirex. Uh, our opponent not doing anything is a huge deal. We need to play land first. That's super important. That allows uh, to counter result reinforcements if he has it. Uh, this is a weird deck. It feels like Boros. It is Boros, but it's also a more mono red than Boros because you don't play Kumano in Boros decks. So it feels like a mono red, uh, but with white protection spells and Virtuoso. I think that's the that's the deck. So let's say it. We have some counter plays, but we are kind of behind uh, just because being on the draw. So we need to really be efficient right now. Like our opponent will get mana advantage over us and there's not much we can do about it. We take the damage, even though we don't have lifelink. Uh, I mean, Preacher can lifelink you a bit. And uh, there is a chance he has a lot of burn. You know what? We could just cut down, but then he can save it probably. So I think we go like this, because this is harder to save. He can Lorenz escape, but he doesn't really get value. This deck is very vulnerable to removal, as usually, uh, but this one even more. Uh, I think I will play Atawara just to, you know, pain myself a little bit less. So they're thinking about casting an instant sp uh, spell, and they decided against it, which is probably, you know, uh, a good decision. All right, this is a huge deal. Uh, so there is a chance they have like lightning strike uh, into play with fire even. So we can play the preacher, risking a dice and losing the counter spell. Honestly, I think we just passed the turn because we have a lot of interaction and we want to make sure that bad things don't happen to us. With Massacre Girl, we can draw a lot of cards later. Our opponent is super tanking on this one, but you know what? That I, I, There is some merit to it. Uh, the point is, if they are waiting, our deck should be a bit more powerful, I think. I don't really know what they play, but I have some idea, you know? Some idea. So we can go for the Heart Stabber right now, which I kinda like. Uh, so let's go for... This will be black mana and this will be blue mana. We don't need to pain ourselves. We still have both interactions open, but now we and you know get something in the board. So I kinda like this play. If we hit a Trata, uh, we can start you know hitting with assassins. So Kenzan, uncounterable, sure. Uh, good play for our opponent. Definitely goes around everything we wanted to do. However, we have their hair stubber, so it hurts less. A shock, sure. Our opponent is playing very well against what we have. However, we are doing cards and we already got the card from our opponent. Unfortunately, Atrata uh, is something we missed. Our opponent doesn't know about the card dance. Two damage. I'm not sure if they have buff spells, but if they don't, I think we should win anyway. Uh, let's play this and see if there's reaction. Like, we will, you know, uh, lowball our answers because we are at 13 and we have better cards. They are hesitating. They only have two cards in the hand. Okay, perfect. This is insane important draw. Probably the most important draw of the game. Now we can have open both interactions and have Preacher. And with this, I think we should win. This was super important. You generally want to keep those. Uh, our opponent has a lot of mana, so uh, make this appear will get worse. Much worse, and we don't want to, you know. I see, that's 3 damage. This is a very interesting decision. Because if they cast it, then we counter spell it. Uh, I mean, we will counter spell this. Preacher is really important and it will be super hard to catch them with Make Disappear later. This is our last turn. They will attack, we won't block and we go from there. They have this, which dies to cut down perfectly. Yep. See, if they play too slow, 
they just cannot win because uh, their deck relies on being as quick as possible otherwise it's just you know they don't do enough all right we are going first we have a lot of bats i really want to see Estrata. we play four for a reason but you know we will get there we will get there let's play takanuma like i i don't think we'll use it as a as a value now let's see what we are against that's super important well it will be an aggro wow <laughs> who could predict this one so this is important uh, so this might be a poison deck and the double striker might be on the next turn they will play something right they have to play something so they can protect creature but they cannot resolve it let's prepare i want to get rid of those make disappears and then we hopefully attack with the bats we'll see all right, I don't know what the card will be, but I know it's getting counter. We just want to trade tempo. Uh, like, it, it would actually be bad for us if our opponent passed the turn. So I'm happy that didn't happen. And now we get Siren in the board, which is nice. So our opponent knows that it's probably next make disappear. We can guarantee a counter spell, but we won't sacrifice this. See? Kinda important. And thanks to this we actually can fight them on value. Now we, if we hit a land, we can double bat and probably destroy the rest of their hand. Uh, I have the mana, right? Listen, we are doing it. We have to. And let's hope that they won't have three answers, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, Fateful Absence. Uh, something that has to be the first one, right? This, this will be hard. Uh, but I think we can get there. I hope we can get there. Uh, it will be probably Adeline. Uh, she's way stronger and she's way faster. It's basically white haste creature. Wedding announcement is strong, but it's on ground, so we can start pumping bats, life gaining a bit. All right, you know what? This can be amazing if we get it right. So let's get the bat. Etrata is here. She's deadly. She's also a fugitive. And sure, more assassins. I will take it. Right? No. No, 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 because I have the Assassin here, so I will cast 3-drop into 4-drop. It's not a bad card, but I think we can do better. I should probably, you know, attack first, but it shouldn't make a difference. Uh, let's go like this. I need uh, to raise him, and I have a lot of lifelink thanks to the counter. Like, we have 3 lifelink a turn, that's a lot. They don't know about this one, and this is entirely just to be a surprise factor here. And we can also ambush, right? 2-2 two, two is actually kind of perfect for them. And they won't flip wedding announcement yet. All right, so, <laughs> all right, all right. I guess we are doing a lot of it. They can quad, no, they only have three. Uh, if they have like result reinforcements, let's see the priority. Well, it will be always scrap. All right, full swing, full swing, and then we will see. Oh no, they have something. Fateful Absence. Alright. But that means we still get, uh, you know, this one. So we get our creature for the turn. That's nice. Ah, unless... Alright, we are getting it. Alright, you probably first time in your life seen this ability we saw. <laughs> Alright, what are you? A Plains. I'm, I'm really happy that it does something. Uh, all right, you know what? It's not the worst. It's not the worst. We need to raise them so every creature is extremely important. Faithful absence on that line means they cannot play her on this turn. So uh, they will get a lot of power on ground after this turn. Uh, they kind of want that line. Vindicator. Well, how do you work? Prevent that damage. So I don't think it was dealt damage. I think it actually goes around stuff. Well, this is an interesting one. Hmm. Trying to figure out what to do, really. I kind of want this. 
Uh, let's get it. We will get a bit more leverage if we hit go for the throat uh, and try to, you know, get around square somehow. This could be a thing. You know what? It's not the worst. So, how do we do it? Okay, let's let's read it. Come so death touch. Any amount of damage. I honestly think it doesn't work like this, and I think we we'll lose. But you know what? I think this is the time to check it. I think this is the time to check it. Here's your Death Toucher. Well, I guess he will just block with the rest of the creatures, right? But we should get a good deal from this. Like, I mean, you know what? Maybe not on this turn, because I don't want to lose her. Like, to, you know, just a lot of small creatures. Uh, because we have Cardo, so it actually puts us ahead of him. I need to get a removal for this, and then we should be okay. It is possible we need to find double removal, I like cut down into go for the throat, but we have some Cardo, so we might get there. Our opponent has one card, and that's it. One card, and that's it. I'm sure it won't be good. Thank you! Oh my god, this is my birthday. My opponent, top deck I land. So if he attacks with Vindicator, that means we are getting our value, so it's not great for him. If he doesn't do anything... By the way, we have blue creatures and black creatures, so Scrarf is not easy to give protection, so they cannot go through. Uh, if we, for example, uh, lose the Siren, we only have black creatures. Well, except this one, but you know. Other than this, and it will probably die at some point. All right, all right. And this is such a lucky situation that the Vindicator is here. If not this card, this would be so much better. Like, this is the only thing preventing our whole game plan. So, we can go Mirex. Hmm. We have some Assassins. I think the damage is fully prevented, right? So, I cannot target a creature that was de dealt damage this turn. I think that's how it works, but I'm not for sure. Uh, let's go for sure with this one. We can start making Mirexes. I think it's prevented, right? So that means we don't really do anything. So let's go for Geeks, I guess. We got some place. But it won't be easy, and I cannot lose the pass, right? I can double attack, uh, but he will he will deal a lot. Like, he can redirect all of this damage, so we need to make sure that it's a kind of lethal. Uh, there is a chance we start using the Geek's ability, but it's 7 mana, so we are still to, to land short. Our opponent definitely not having the best time of his life. Alright, that's one of the answers. One of the answers. Man, what a weird game, isn't it? I think I attack with Fetrata. And then we try to fish for some good deals. Yeah, I think we go like this. He will definitely block, but we have double black, so we can play both of them. I mean, listen. <laughs> we will see how it works. We will see. I probably wouldn't do it, but I want to make sure that I, I know how it works perfectly. Alright, so this he will get the card and kill both of the bats and go for other line. So, I don't think it was dealt damage, because death touch didn't work, uh, but I will still try to do this. Uh, we will lose this game in, you know, uh, in pursuit of education. Yep, there are no targets, uh, nothing was dealt damage, and that's a game. Right, because he will get this, he will kill this, then the ad line will be played on the next turn, and they will take over our game plan. And I don't think there's much we can do, so I don't want to drag it out. Let's give him a good game. Uh, but I still think it was interesting interaction that I personally didn't see. So yeah, I think it was worth a game. Hope you enjoyed. Yeah, sure. Alright, going first with some sirens. I think that's a good opening. Let's see it. Uh, we will probably go with the bat, right? I would love to hit her Trata on turn 3 and some lands to play her, but we will see. Alright, potentially a lot of ga live game. 
So we can go double siren and just go a little bit crazy. You know what? I kind of like this. We cannot race him, but the worst case is Amalia, right? Because she gets potentially a card. Everything else dies to go for the throat, and we can potentially hit a land. We have a lot of map tokens, so I want to be as aggressive as possible to start, you know, pressuring him. And if that's something like voice, he don't, he doesn't get any value. Amalia, of course, the best case scenario for him so far, uh, but we'll try, we'll try. Very unfortunate. However, we got a land on our own, so that's great for us. And I can draw three cards here. Listen, this could be the biggest mistake of my life, but <laughs> listen, I cannot say no to triple card going, all right? Like, we just have to do it, man. Like, look at this value. All right, yes, yes. This is the last time we will do it, all right? But it's epic. We refilled basically everything we had. Like, we more than doubled our hand. So this is his turn on the, on the other side. Uh, all right, this is kind of scary. Another one. Oh, he's really good at magic. Uh, he really wants those extra cards. Because right now he's a little bit bottlenecked on the mana by, you know, being on the draw. And, yeah, this this might be a problem. This, this is already a problem. How much can I draw? So I think we have to go, go for the throat and to make this appear. I think that's the play. I said we won't do it, alright, but... I have to do it. This is too much value. Alright, remove her. Like, we need a lot, man. Alright, so... We can actually go for the bat into go for the throat. I like it because then we can triple map token and try to get for a 4-4 lifelinker. All right, Geek's Command. So that's probably some... Oh man, this is this is problematic. But we have some good decisions here. All right, he wants to play this. We need to counter it. Right, how do work? And so we have to counter it. That means we cannot counter Geek's Command, I guess. Oh, I don't love this play, but I think we have to go for it. It seems so far, and I, uh, yeah, like it's not great, but we have to do it. All right, and if, this is interesting, I can use map token if I want to go cut down. No, I have to make this appear. All right. I'm not sure if he will play this, but we need to be prepared. And I think this might be the last turn when we attacked so heavily for the cardo. Now we try to go into basically playing control. Here she is. And killing probably the bat. We need to slow him down as much as possible. That also means he cannot attack with Amalia, at least. So there's that. And we can kill... Oh my god, I was so scared that he would play something. <laughs> Cut down is absolutely prime, prime draw. Yep. If he cannot uh, man, we are so close to dying to our own cargo, and we went to the point where we fully stabilized and we actually have advantage both in board and both in cards. Man, this was stressful, but I, I enjoyed this one. Well, we are playing tribal, just uh, a different one, you know. <laughs> what the hell is this? Oh my god, I'm all right. We are going with the unranked. Hello there. Hello, my friend. Uh, so I wanted to rank, but you know what? It shouldn't make much difference. Let's sit. I mean, I will play triple bat and see what happens. So the, this is the march. Uh, they will hold the mana, so they will counter the next bat, unfortunately. But, you know, we will do something. Alright, so they don't have two mana remover or anything. Alright, so is it an Ertrata? Well, that's for sure not. <laughs> Uh, they will counter it, right? Like, we need to go through double counter spell, so it won't be easy. Uh, our opponent will get to deadly cover up in time. So that's not amazing, and that will give him the march. So, unfortunately, uh, he has double blue. 
I mean, let's attack and see if something happens. Because the lifelink doesn't matter, our opponent had fu can fully ignore the situation. So we can play a Trata, uh, have it countered. I kind of like it. It's more mana efficient this way, especially if we draw a land, we can uh, double play those on the next turn. Our opponent cannot sweep the board yet, so we are guaranteed, guaranteed s at least some value. Uh, but they can do it in two turns. So, let's roll and see what happens. I think our opponent is waiting with deadly cover up, honestly. What are you? I can counter spell what you. Man, I can counter spell deadly cover up. Are you serious? <laughs> oh my god. I'm so happy I played this game. Please don't kill this and just cast. They will never, never see it coming. Absolutely. Alright, listen, I don't need to do it. That's the third Tetrata. Alright. What are we doing about the situation, my friend? Oh, I, I wish he did the thing. Alright. So they want to trade against something. We kill this, and I think we play the bat, because he has no counter spells. And we get rid of deadly cover up. If he has another one. Listen, oh my god, I nearly messed it. <laughs> if uh, he has two, we are in some serious... Tr well then. <laughs> are, you, are you serious? He topped the second one. Alright, that goes entirely around what we had planned. Oh man, I wish I could counter. Man, we had such a juicy play. However, still, we have this, you know? It's kind of okay. Uh, yeah, they have March. And let's use the map token. Uh, we want to use it. Will he exile a card? Three. No, let's go for the Siren. He wants to kill a Trata anyway. And the third one, hopefully, goes for absolutely, absolutely wor the worst draw of the deck. So, and then we cover up again. Man, man, we had such a spicy play. I wonder why he didn't cast that we cover up. Oh, I'm so sad. I'm thinking if I could play it in a different way to force him, but against this token, it, it wasn't easy. Like, I had to tap out for go for the throat. Uh, hopefully, the, well, the third Tetrata dies to this, right? Because they got back all the cards, so suddenly all the bats did nothing. We had, like, huge tempo advantage, and you we would win a war draw of the deck. Uh, yep, that's game. And, I mean, as usually, the draws will decide the game. If he had one deadly cover up, we had this game fully. If he had two, he had this game fully. So, yeah. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. Alright, guys. Finally, time to talk about the deck and the building. Because Assassins is a very interesting tree bar and you don't see it for a very good reason. And I want to talk a little bit more. But first of all, let's address the elephant in the room actually four elephants in the room. Sure, that the Apocalypse, the final version, looked like this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Massacre Girl is very nice. The Rooftop Something Assassin, the four mana 2-2 two -two with lifing, is kind of sweet. The problem is they are not sure dreads. And very often I actually lost games where my opponent was at, you know, 3-5 life and I just don't have the way to go for this one extra burst. Uh, already with Etrata and Heartstabber as our 2 and 3 drops, we are pretty low on the raw damage, and I think this is something the deck desperately needs just to be, you know, uh, in line with the other aggressive decks. Uh, you have a lot of extra value, but at some point you just need to hit your opponent in the face, uh, because you cannot uh, control the game fully, it's not a control deck, it's just, you know, an aggro tempo deck, basically, so at some point you need to go for a checkmate and shoulder them. So that's the first thing. Unfortunately, I actually played way more assassins in the first builds, but let's actually check what are the assassins, especially the good ones. Creatures? Well, you have a huge selection, don't you? <laughs> that's the problem with assassins. Uh, we actually have things like Vayner Reaper. Unfortunately, he's way too expensive for the game plan we want. And actually, the only good assassin right now is Etrata. And that's the problem, that's the reason you don't see too much. Etrata also has some downsides, of course, but she is actually a creature that can be scary. You have seen that a monorad player literally scooped only to her, 
when he realized how much he's giving. Massacre Girl is very nice, however, you need your opponent's creatures, you, you know, like, you need good situation for it, and I just needed something that deals directly the damage. The other assassins are just a little bit lackluster. Rooftop Assassin, the idea was that I can cast it a dance step, uh, use the ability to kill some red creature that was attacking my voice, sorry. Uh, so, for example, we block with the Siren or something, then we cast this, the Siren kinda kills their Godric or anything that was attacking, and then we follow up with a Trata, we attack with this, we lifelink, we get creatures. That was the idea. Uh, it kinda never happened. <laughs> I'll be honest, it kinda never happened and it's very hard to use. There's also the different one. This one is more aggressively started, but they are not good cards. Like they are just, you know, random draft commons basically. So assassins definitely need this kind of supports, you know, just stronger creatures. I was super happy to see the Aven Heartstabber. That's the only assassin that also synergizes with Etrata very nicely. However, you need to be careful. This one rotates out, so you probably don't want to craft it for me, this is a card that I loved since it was printed. We have many decks on the channel with this one. However, it definitely is a 2-mana 1-1. One, one. It draws you cards, it is a, a, it is Assassin. Uh, so with Etrata, it actually gets some raw power that it definitely needs. And you can just play this into this and instantly get a 2-2. Two, two. That kinda means that you played 2-mana 3-3. Three, three. If this synergy goes through, you paid 2-mana and you got 3-3 three, three from this. And yeah, then you can just follow up with Etrata. So the deck is very interesting. Uh, is that better than the, you know, classic Demir midrange? I don't think it is. I don't think it is. However, Etrata is extremely fun card. So if she gets more support, support in some way, I can see her being pretty, you know, pretty decent. But right now there's just nothing to choose from. So that's why we had to go with this, you know, uh, the standard Demir shell for aggro because we just need efficient creatures to buffer uh, those low assassin stats. But I really hope you enjoyed it. We showcase how powerful she can be in the right deck and if you want some stats oh boy i have interesting ones for you first we are above 50 percent win rate with this one which is great right we beat the meta we showcase that this can be the meta decks however the split is kind of incredible because we actually never lost the game since we switched shorts like we went 5-0 with this deck however Without sure that we went like 1 5 or something. So in total, we are 6 wins out of 11 games. But man, the split is incredible. It seems that putting back sharded is the single best thing we could do in format. So that's that's kind of funny. Uh, on, in all seriousness, uh, win rates aren't super important in uh, you know low amount of games because as you can see we went from like 20% to 100% and I'm not sure if that was the shorted change or just the matchmaker so you know uh, unless you play like 100 games I don't think uh, the stats really tell you any kind of real story but you know what I'm taking my wins and I'm bringing them home I hope that it will be the same for you uh, if you are brave enough to you know use this deck and if not I hope you enjoyed the video tell me in the comments what you think about you know the deck win rate assassins i would love to know and yeah that's kind of it for today so thank you for watching until the end that is really extremely appreciated and you are the true hero of this channel for doing this and yeah that's kind of it for today so thank you and see you guys tomorrow